Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Based on the time zones you are coming from. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 14 years now, where I have been leading the global design and development teams for designing enterprise solutions. And since last five years, I have been working as a corporate trainer as well, where I have been trained different corporates on different technologies, specifically in cloud computing, on AIML, and on big data engineering technologies. So that's a nutshell of what I have been doing for more than 13 years now. So the main goal of today's session is to discuss on how exactly we can work with the Power BI and how exactly we can integrate Power BI with Azure platform. So here we are going to first of all discuss on what exactly Azure is. And then we are going to discuss on the services for Azure for our platform. And then we are going to talk about how exactly Power BI is structured. And then we are going to talk about the components of Power BI and the concept of machine learning and then we are going to see a small hands-on on how exactly we can combine them all together. So this is what we are going to have a discussion on as we proceed further. So first of all, if you talk about Azure, then Azure has been the second leading global platform for cloud computing, preceded by AWS having the biggest market share for around 40% and second biggest Market is held by Azure having a market share of around 21% and then followed by GCP. So Azure is the cloud computing vendor which allows us to have the access to more than 200 plus services or for computation, databases, storage, networking, and other components including AI, ML, big data to ensure that again, if we have a requirement of any application deployment, be it for big data, for normal e-commerce, or for even just for storing data, so that we can make it available to the other users. We can make use of this platform where we don't have to worry about setting up any kind of infrastructure. We don't have to worry about setting up any kind of platform. We can have the entire services or you can say infrastructure available, made available to us where we can choose what kind of infrastructure we want and then we can have the application deployed on top of it by along with storing the entire data set required to run that application as well. So this is what we can do uh, this is what we do by using the concept of Azure as a cloud computing vendor. And in Azure, again, everything works on demand basis. That means we don't have to pay anything upfront. And we can always have more number of resources deployed as and when required. That means we can start with, let's suppose, storing just 10 GB of data. And now we want to increase the, the limit for the amount of data that we are going to store so we can have it increased. We can choose any configuration for the virtual machine, for the databases and whatnot. That means we can always have the resources on demand. So whenever we need them, that is going to be made available to us at any point of time. We can always scale up the resources as and when required. So let's say we have deployed a database of 20 GB space and now we want to increase it to, let's suppose 40, then we can do that in just one second altogether. So we do have the setup for different databases that we can go for. And again, that to as quickly as possible. And then we have nothing, we do have the complete pay as you go model. That means there is nothing that we have to pay on a, uh, we can say as a per, as a upfront amount, we can pay exactly for the amount of time we have consumed the resources, which refers to pay as consumed. And then we have abstract resources. I mean, we have, we don't have to pay, pay, we don't have to worry about any kind of hardware setup and then in terms of efficiency of experts, we can simply utilize the skills, knowledge, and resources that we have here, having a complete security, and again, a custom domain, a custom forum available, where we can get the help as and when required. Next, we have the Power BI domain. So first of all, in terms of the structured learning path at Eureka, it all starts with the introduction to Power BI, then we move on to Power BI desktop and data transformation. And then it is followed by the hands-on and then the DAX expression service. Then it, follow, then it is followed by the data visualization hands-on and then introduction to Power BI service, Q&A and Quick Insight. Then followed by the connectivity modes and then the Power BI report servers. Then using the R and Python in Power BI. And then towards the end, we have the advanced analytics that we can do in Power BI platform. So these all things can be defined. And again, we can ensure that we do have the access to all of these so that we can simply have it have a complete structured learning path so that when we start when we actually start working on the projects we can do that as quickly as possible and we will know 
okay, what are the best practices to create the visualization, what we should do, what we should not do, so that we can handle the real-time projects with, with ease. So this is going to be the entire structured learning part that we are going to have. And next we have Power BI. So what is Power BI? Power BI is like a free business intelligence tool that we can make use of. So we can simply use it for getting a more, or we can say converting the existing, the existing data into the visualized format. For example, in, in graphs, charts, Venn diagrams, the line graphs, and so on, so that we can get a good insight out of it. So first of all, we are going to look at the hands-on, how exactly they are structured. So Power BI is offered as a free tool where we do get the access as a Power BI desktop that we can use. So Power BI Desktop is what? Power BI Desktop is basically a platform through which we can have, through which we can have all the visualization done as required. So that is what we can then uh, do with Power BI Desktop. And it is, it is also offered as a part of Power BI service that we can work with. So let's do one thing. Let's launch Power BI so that we can use it as a reference here. So this is the home page for Power BI, where we have multiple panes towards the left. We can see here we have the now currently we are in the reports pane, where we can see the list to see the reports that we are going to work with. And once we have the access to a data set, when we can start generating the reports, then we have the data pane where whatever data we have connected to, we can go ahead and get the insight of the data. And then we have the relationship or we can say the model view, where if we have included multiple tables or multiple sheets, then we can set the relationship between those different tables, like the union, join, intersection, how one table is connected to the other table, so that we can set up the relationships, so that we can use that those relationships in order to work on a given data set. So this is what we do. So let's do one thing. Let's use one of the sample data set to get connected, just a moment. And that data is not available there, so we can do one thing. We do have a CSE file that we can work with. So this is a sample file that you all are going to work with. So here we have downloaded this file here that, you, that we are going to import in our power bi setup now to start importing the data set what we can do we can simply click on the option which says get data and under get data we can click on more so we can see the list of all different data sources that we can connect with power bi let it be opened up power bi mac power bi is not available to be installed on mac millennially it cannot be installed on mac it's a windows space specific but again yes we can use power bi service which is offered so we can use that so let's say here we have excel sheet we can use excel in case you want to work with the azure based services then we have all the azure data services available that we can connect directly with power bi because both of these solutions are offered by microsoft only so that's why it is easily accessible or you can say we can easily access it the way we want and whenever we, we want it so this is what we can do with, with the excel based component here so let's say here we can choose the file and here we can choose the excel workbook so here we are going to choose the workbook that we have downloaded under downloads so whenever we are going to open up an excel file in case there are multiple sheets and those sheets are going to be considered as a different table altogether so let this be downloaded so if we are trying to get connected to any excel sheet then we do need to have the access to the our database engine and plus we also need to have the access to the access database altogether so that we can have so that we can make use of it so here we have to install the access database engine for the first time in case you don't have it installed so you're trying to set it up once we have it we can up and we can have it up and running as because again if you don't have an app ms of it's installed and for that we for the excel sheet to be imported into power bi we have to install microsoft access database engine and once we do that
So once that is installed, so now we can click on get Excel workbook again. And now again, we can choose the sample superstore. So this is going to open up the file. In case there are multiple sheets available, then all of the sheets are going to be imported as different tables. And then we can choose which table to import, which one to skip. And then we can start with the visualization. So you can see under this, we have orders, people, and then we have returns. So we can select all the items here and then we will be able to see a small preview for the items. Like for example, here we have these information regarding the orders and so on. So if you want to turn to transform the data in the beginning, then we can transform or we can simply go ahead and click on load. So this is going to load the given data set in Power BI that we can work with. So we can see in the left side, in the right side, we have orders, people and returns. So these are three tables that we have imported. And now we can see the support columns that we can use for creating the visualization. For example, let's say now this is like a sales data for a company. And now the company wants to understand. So the company also wants to understand, let's say how the profit has been distributed over the years. The company wants to see the exact distribution. So again, there we can go ahead and have a setup defined. So basically, let's say if you want to see the distribution of profit over the years, then we can choose, let's say, the profit, and then we can choose the order date. So whenever we are going to choose any two columns, so the, the default or whatever visualization the Power BI thinks is suitable, that is going to be picked. For example, here the bar graph has been picked for the two different, we can say data the tables that we have copied. So let's say here we have profit and then we have order date. So one has to be a measure and the other one has to be categorical value. Then we have to simply define, let's suppose here, we want to, now here we want to visualize again the performance. So what we can do is, we can convert this to, let's suppose, line graph. Now from this line, it seems like, okay, it has, the company has been on a continuous profit throughout the entire year. And now the company wants to dive deeper on how exactly it has been in terms of month by month distribution. So we can simply span date. So let's say here we don't want to view this on a year by year basis. We want to view this on a monthly basis here. Now we can see a different picture. So we can see the actual division of profit among different years as required here. So again, we can see here the entire setup has been defined. So now the company wants to dive deeper. Again, the company wants to have the distribution for all four years. This is a collective distribution for the profit on a monthly basis for all four years. And now we want to see, we want to show the graph of all four years together. So the single graph, what we can do, we can simply drag pick here and then in the legend section that we have chosen for the current graph, we can drop here as a part of legend and we can see now we have distinctive graphs being generated where we can see distributions for all four years shown as a different legend altogether. That's how it simply is going to be. So as it's been almost time now, so let's do one thing. Let's say we wrap it up for today, everyone. And first of all, a big thank you to you all for being a part of this entire session. Take care. Bye-bye.